saying the floor, all the deaconess, all the deaconess of this church, all the brethren that always our new brother who just just joined the church. Y'all already have white suits in the Amen. Last night I spent a lot of time listening to Billy Graham. His 95th birthday. The thing that they said about a great man of God. And one of the things that Billy Graham often preached, he just preached how great God was. And how God will wash you from all of your sins. And all you need to do is believe. That's all you need to do is believe. When we get through preaching today, I hope there's someone here. Don't let the devil keep you in your seat. All you need to do is turn your life over to Christ. Yes. Amen. 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 The blood is clean. The blood of Jesus. Wash you. Wash away your sin. Yeah. Again, from the book of Philemon, the first nine verses. Paul, a prison of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our beloved brother and fellow laborer. And to our beloved Ophelia and Chippus and fellow soldier and to the church and thou. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of the love and faith that thou hast for the Lord Jesus and for all saints. And the communications of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have a great joy and consolation in thy love, because the vows of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to join thee, that which is convenient. In the very last verse, yet, for love's sake, yeah. I rather beseech thee, yeah. being such a one as Paul the age, and now I'm also a prisoner. I'm a prisoner. I'm a prisoner yeah. of Jesus Christ. Mm. Yeah. Mr. Ball. For the sake of love. For the sake of love. It's often been said that love hides a multitude of faults. Love hides a multitude of faults. A lot of things we excuse people for, we say because it's of the sake of love. Love is a funny word. Most of us as adults have experienced this thing we call love. Yeah. Some of us charge it in love more than one time. <laughs> L-O-V-E, love. People do a lot of things for the sake of love. I told the 8 o'clock crowd this morning when I was a boy, my mama gave me many whippings. And most of them I deserve. And she would tell me, Junior, go out there to that tree and make me break off a little limb, a branch, and then make me twist it up and bring it back to her. And as a little lad, I would look up at her and she said, I'm doing this because I love you. With a follow up with that, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. <laughs> I told the crowd this morning, I'm in my 50s and they ain't figured that one out yet. <laughs> but my mother did it for the sake of love. I did some marriage and counseling the other day. And every day, people are saying, for well, better or worse, richer or poor sickness and in health, yeah. to death do us part. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, some of those who've been married for a long time were saying, if only I had known now, <laughs> what I 
good move back then. All oh, for the sake of love. People travel a long ways for love. Well. They do a lot of things for love. Down Ross said, ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no real wide enough. Ain't no valley low enough to keep me from you. I'm not the only one you should listen to Down Ross. <laughs> I ain't always been a preacher, Amen. but you ain't always been a saint. Man, man, man. For the sake of love. That's right, that's right. A lot of times, as I said this morning, however, we look for love in the wrong place. Yeah. And when you look for love in the wrong place, you'll remind yourself of, of these famous words, if you love me so much, how come you treat me so bad? So bad. <laughs> Those words. But I want you to know this Sunday morning, I stand as an ambassador of Christ to let you know that I know a place you can look for love because Jesus is love. And Christ is all in all to me, this world will ever be. And as I look further down into this golden text this morning, we will again revisit the book of Philemon. And Philemon is a love letter written by the master writer himself by the name of the Apostle Paul. The book of Philemon is only one chapter with 25 verses. But oh, what love is enclosed in those verses. The great reformer Martin Luther said, oh, it's a noble book of love. This is one of Paul's epistles called the Pauline epistles, better known as the prison epistles. Yeah. It's called the prison epistles because Paul wrote the epistle while incarcerated under house arrest there in Rome. Yeah. In this particular epistle, Paul asked for love. He asked for understanding yeah. for a runaway slave by the name of Onesimus. Yeah. And who better would know about to ask for forgiveness than the man called Paul? Right. For the Lord would change his life on the road called the Damascus. Yeah. Yeah. But Paul said, I'm the least to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church. Yeah. But Paul would go on and say, by the grace of God, though, yeah. Yeah. I am what I am. And I want to say to you this morning, I might not be what all I need to be, well. but I sure not what I used to be. All, right. all I can say, I am what I am by the grace of God. All right. Thank you, God. Amen. Paul, Paul, the cause of his strict upbringing, said this morning, a lot of times people act the way they act because of the environment they was raised in. But don't let that be an excuse for you not changing. All right, amen. The Lord is able to change your heart. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Change Paul Harbor. Paul was raised in a strict family, an Orthodox Jewish family. Amen. At the age of 13, Paul would be set sail to a city called Jerusalem. Yeah. When you're in a Jewish family at the age of 13, you're considered an adult male. Yeah. Uh, Paul's father put him on a ship out of Tasha yeah. to be sail due north past Antioch. Right. And after a boat yeah. ride, he would take a mule and backpack for the rest of the mountain wide way to a city called Jerusalem. Yeah. In Jerusalem, Paul would enter a courtroom, into a classroom. In that classroom, Paul would be taught by a master teacher by the name of Gamil. Gamil was an expert in Jewish tradition. He was an expert in Jewish law. He was an expert in Jewish customs. He was so good, all the great historians talked about him. Whether you talk about the great historian Jerome, uh, whether you talk about Theophilus of Antioch, right. uh, all the count of the Macaron of the Matoria, all talked about this great man called Gamil. Yeah. Yeah. Gamil was so good, they nicknamed him the beauty of the law. Yeah. Everybody wanted to study at the feet of Gamil. Yeah. 
Saul had the opportunity to study after weeks and months and then years he was studying. Then Saul would return back to his hometown there in Tasha. Yeah. And when he returned back there, the text said he lived the strictest set life of a Pharisee. Yeah. Yeah. The Pharisees are those who know it all. Amen. The Pharisee was the one that hung around in the marketplace and wearing the long robe. Saying them long old prayers. Yeah. And at night going back to your wooden house. Uh -huh. But he would live the strictest set of a Pharisee. In fact, he went overboard with it. Mm -hmm. So I would later say, my religion and the law became my God. Yeah. 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 And anything that controls you is your God. Yeah. If it's alcohol, that's your God. Yeah. Right. If it's sex, that's your God. Right. If it's your job, that's your God. Yeah. Right. Anything that takes you out of the will of a true and living God, that's your God. Yeah. Yeah. Paul said, I was strangled by the law. At the same time Paul was doing David his teaching across the water, there was another man by the name of John the Baptist. Yeah. And old John the Baptist was out there preaching somewhere in the wilderness of Judea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John the Baptist was one old ye generation of vipers yeah. who have warned you to flee from the wrath that's about to come. Yeah. It was running all from downtown. But John was laying the way, preparing for Christ to come. Yeah. During that same time of Christ's three-year ministry, Saul was monitoring the progress that was going on there in Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. Saul heard about a man called Jesus that went down to Canaan and yeah. turned water into wine. Yeah. Saul heard about a man called Jesus that had whipped them out of the temple and had a midnight conversation with a man called Nicodemus. Yeah. Saul heard about a man called Jesus that had walked out on the water. Yeah. He also had calmed the storm and raging sea. Yeah. Saul heard about a man that could heal the sick, yeah. give sight to the blind, yeah. raise men from the dead. He heard about a man called Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Jews had their hopes as Jesus' popularity was growing. Oh, yeah. There was much excitement after we decided that Jesus must be arrested. Yeah. There was much excitement after the Jesus had been crucified. All right. All right. All right. Saul was still wondering because Jesus had said that one day he would return. Yeah. They remember the man called Lazarus, how oh. Jesus had raised him oh. from the yeah. dead. Yeah. And after the crucifixion of Jesus and after the death, there was still much hope among the Jewish brethren. But Christ would reappear. And now a new movement would spring up. After Christ's ascension, then a new movement came along called the Children of the Way. Saul was upset about the way the Jewish brethren had handled the case back there in Jerusalem. So Saul decided, I'm going to Jerusalem take matters in my own hand. Yeah. Yeah. Going to Jerusalem to see the high priest. Yeah. And I'm going to ask the high priest for a letter so I can go to Damascus. Yeah. If I can find any of these children that's called children of the way, yeah. I'm going to bound them. I don't care if they're men, women, boys, or girls. Yeah. Drag them on down to prison. 